Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and this is my vlog channel and my craft channel, my lifestyle channel, just all the things channel. <laughs> I am really excited because I announced a few days ago on Instagram that I am pregnant and it's been so surreal to share this news with the public. Of course, I've shared with close friends and family and I'm super out of breath, which is a wonderful thing that pregnancy has brought me. <laughs> I am currently 23 weeks pregnant, so I'm over halfway through and I really thought that I was gonna wait a lot longer before I shared, but it just felt right to share it now and also, it was getting really hard to hide because the belly has popped and we're still in cold weather and I could continue wearing really frumpy clothes <laughs> to hide it. But I just, uh, I love seeing the belly, it's so cute. <laughs> and I'm just really excited to have shared with you guys and just wanna say a big thank you for your support. I'm absolutely completely overwhelmed in a good way with how many people have just wonderful things to say. So thank you for the support and the love. I cannot wait to share more of this process with you on this channel. And today we're going to start off with a Q&A. So while I do this Q&A, I am going to be sewing an outfit for my little baby. And the outfit, it makes it really obvious what it is. <laughs> I'm having a little girl. I've already shared that on Instagram, so you probably already knew, but if not surprise, I'm, I'm pregnant and I'm having a girl. I'm super excited to be having a girl, although I would have been happy either way. When I saw a girl on the screen, I was like, I can make her dresses and we can match. <laughs> as far as the pattern goes, I'm going to be making the marigold dress and I've actually already made this I made it a few days ago because I wanted to be extra prepared for this video. Look at how cute and tiny this dress is. <laughs> As I was cutting out the pieces, I, I cut off this like top part and I started crying. I'm a very emotional person as it is and then you add pregnancy hormones and it's so much worse <laughs> this is a zero to three month size i kind of mapped out how old or how old she's going to be during each season coming up for all the different clothing sizes so that i know that when i'm buying something um i'll buy for the correct season or, or at least close to this to the right season it lined up to have zero to three months be summer season and also nine to 12 months be summer season and also part of 12 to 18 months will be summer too, like half of that. So anyway, as far as sewing goes though, I just wanted to play it extra safe because I'd like for her to actually be able to wear these things. So this is the marigold dress. I bought the pattern on Etsy and I have to say that the instructions leave much to be desired, but if you've constructed a garment before, you're gonna be totally fine. It's just a smaller version. Will it be easier because it's smaller? No. <laughs> I did have some issues, but now that I've worked through those issues and figured it out, I think I'll be fine the second time around. It has a little detail on the back where you can have buttonholes to close this up. So depending on size, like I think that just helps it to last a little bit longer. So I have two sizes, two buttonholes here, and I did just a pink little button that I had in my stash. I already prepped these ruffle sleeves. I'm doing a ruffle version. You could do a non-ruffle version, but I like the ruffle version to start. And this fabric is really, really cute, um, like harvest fabric. I just thought it was really sweet and I've been holding on to it for a long time and I didn't know what to do with it and it just felt really, it just felt right for a little girl dress. So I'm gonna sew these up really quick. I just hem the end of the ruffle and then we're gonna answer a question. So the first question is, how did you feel when you found out? I honestly cannot describe how Oh, it was just such a crazy feeling to see a positive on a pregnancy test. It wasn't the first time that I've taken a pregnancy test, but it was the first time I've ever seen a positive. And it was so crazy because I wanted to get the most accurate reading. So I took it really, really early in the morning with my first pee and the it was very concentrated let's just say that <laughs> so the positive sign came up immediately every video i've ever seen of someone taking a pregnancy test consisted of them like waiting around for two minutes or setting a timer and coming back and i didn't even have two minutes to process so it was just immediately like yes you are pregnant i had a pretty strong feeling that i was pregnant though because up to that point i have been tracking my cycle for years and years and years and I knew exactly when I was ovulating. I had felt some changes in my body in the days leading up to taking the test. Like 
I just felt different. I don't know how to fully explain it without like going into gory details. But it kind of felt like a confirmation of this like intuition or this feeling that I had and it was really nice to know like my body was correct in telling me this or my intuition was right in thinking this. The next step was to gather up that piece that I just hemmed, so I gathered it. Okay, the next question is how did you tell Daniel? So this is actually kind of, I wish that I recorded, but I was so like freaked out and excited. He woke up maybe like an hour after I took the test. And for that hour after finding out, I was literally just pacing around my house, like breathing and like freaking out. I planned ahead and I bought those overalls that were in my photo from the reveal, uh, which was smart <laughs> because I really thought that I might be able to wait to tell him until like later in the day, but I absolutely could not. So as soon as he woke up, I was like, hey, Dan, <laughs> come look at this. And I put the overalls like on our spare bed and I put the test like in the pocket of the overalls and he walks in and he looks at it and I don't think, it, he didn't register what it was because again, he had just woken up, it was really early. And he was like, okay, cool. Like, yeah, you bought baby overalls. And I was like, uh, you definitely didn't see the test. So like I brought him back in and I was like, look harder. And then he just kind of like, I saw his body kind of um, like, you know, shock. And he was like, really? Like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And that's how I told him. I wish that I did get a video, but in general, we're a little bit more private, like on our personal life. So like, I don't know if I would have posted it anyway, but it was like a sweet reaction. Like we were like, wow, okay. So I guess we're doing this. These straps are so cute. As you can see, it's a ruffle. <laughs> How have you been feeling and what are your symptoms? I have been feeling in the last couple of weeks a million times better, but I do have to say that the first trimester and even part of the second trimester was horrible, like really, really, really bad. Um, lots of people get morning sickness, but the morning sickness that I experienced was on another level. And my doctor was like, I think that we're edging into the HG range, which is hyperemesis gravidarum, 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 something like that. Um, basically, it's just extreme morning sickness. I was nauseous from the moment that I woke up to the moment that I went to sleep. Really, the only time that I ever had relief from nausea was when I was sleeping. So eventually, my doctor did prescribe me some nausea medication that really helped. Pretty much every smell made me gag. It just was a really terrible time but I'm through it now. And in, again, in the last couple of weeks, I've felt a lot better and I've had like the resurgence of energy. Like I feel at least a little bit of a semblance of self again. I, I don't know what the third trimester has in store for me knowing all of this, but I'm just glad that right now I am feeling so much better. Okay, our straps are done. And as I held that up, I realized that I made a mistake. I made two of the exact same strap and not a mirror image. So that sucks. I'm gonna have to redo it because it's way too much to unpick. So I'm gonna do that later though. I really don't wanna do that right now. I wanna keep it moving. The next question is, have the dogs acted differently? And yes and no. I think it's honestly hard to tell because my dogs have always been really clingy in general. Like they are... <laughs> always on top of you. Through the pregnancy, they might've sensed that I wasn't feeling very well because in the past when I've been sick, they have been a little bit more cuddly and like willing to take naps with me and stuff. Um, but we're doing some training with them, new tricks and obedience things with them, like definitely not jumping up. And if there's like a blanket on the ground, teaching them not to go and lay on it or be near it because babies are oftentimes on the ground with a blanket. And while I don't have like big dogs, it's still something that we're like thinking about and aware of that they could step on the baby and it could hurt the baby. So I don't know, kind of maybe just being a little bit overcautious with that, but we're working on some stuff. This is the bodice piece and it's so cute and tiny, <laughs> but I have it right sides together and I actually positioned it so that um, the picnic basket would be in the very center of the bodice. Now, normally when you're making a lined bodice, you would insert the straps into this, but I'm not doing that until the end of the process because when I made my initial dress, I was having so many issues with which direction to sew on the skirt with the gathers. And it literally was like, <laughs> I had to go to bed without finishing the project because I was like, I need fresh eyes because for some reason I just cannot figure this out. But I'll just go back and unpick 
um, all of that once I figure out where the skirt is gonna be attached and all of that. Look at that cute little picnic basket. It's adorable, I love it. <laughs> How do you have energy to build the greenhouse and any fears or precautions for building and gardening? Okay, I'm gonna level with you. The greenhouse kind of sat untouched for like three months because from the point that I got pregnant, my life completely flipped upside down. So I found it at four weeks and by six weeks, I was already sick. So I had like a couple weeks of like, yay, this is exciting and nothing really feels that different. And then it went downhill super fast. So yeah, the greenhouse really did not get a lot of love from me, but once I did start feeling better, maybe like around 16, 17 weeks, I went out there and I did some stuff. I mean, I wasn't feeling 100%, but I definitely had days where I was feeling better than others. I am a generally pretty active person and in pregnancy, it's better if you can to move around and sort of be active like you were. Like if you were weightlifting, then continue weightlifting, obviously not as heavy and you have to like make a few changes, but generally you can sort of continue living your life as you did as long as you weren't like doing absolutely wild things like bungee jumping. I mean, my, my newest greenhouse video that will be coming out, like I've been pregnant that entire time and I've been lifting things and drilling things and moving things and it's been totally fine. And I think one of the reasons that I was nervous to announce that I was pregnant was the possibility of getting those messages that's like, oh, is this smart for you to be doing while you're pregnant? Like you really shouldn't be lifting that, this, that, and the other. Like I just didn't want that kind of commentary. And I know that it comes from like a place of love and care, but generally I don't like being told that I can't do things <laughs> as a personality trait. And then add on like being pregnant and people already sort of like infantilizing you, like acting like you can't do things. It just is probably my biggest pet peeve. Like if I, I know my physical limits and like I'm very in touch with my doctor. And so if something doesn't feel right, I don't do it. But if something is fine and I'm fine, then I'm gonna continue doing it. You know, if it's lifting a bag of rocks or it's building a bench in my greenhouse, I'm gonna keep doing it even though I'm pregnant. You know what I mean? Like I'm not just gonna sit idle when that's not what I used to do, you know? So even in regards to the garden, like I'm gonna be aware of being out there when it's super hot and make sure that I'm staying hydrated. Things that you should be doing anyway. I definitely am just like listening to my body more as far as limits go, but I'm continuing to live my life almost as I normally would because I don't want to become like super inactive if that's not how I was before, you know? And like that's literally no judgment to anybody who does take this time to like rest a lot because sometimes you have to if you're like a more high risk pregnancy, but I'm not. And so I feel like, and with the approval of my doctor, you know, I can continue living my life pretty much as I was, as long as I'm feeling well. With this dress, I'm doing French seams and probably for everything that I make for the baby, I will do some sort of like advanced method like that. It's not advanced. Uh, let's just say like more thorough method because I wanna make sure that these do not fall apart and also that the, there's no like itchy thing like touching their skin. I'm also being kind of mindful about the fabric that I choose. I'm really trying to stick to like cotton and bamboo and linen, just like super breathable things because I feel like that will just be more pleasant on the skin. This question is, any cravings or interesting discoveries? So I will say I have not had any cravings. It's just been aversions <laughs> because of my uh, morning sickness situation. But I will say that lately, if I get it in my mind that I want a certain thing to eat, then I have to have it. Like it is a desperation and a hunger. Like I have, there's somebody spraying my house for bugs and they're standing outside the window. I wonder if they could hear me. They probably could hear me. Anyway, um, it's a desperation and a hunger that I have never felt before. I can only call it primal hunger. I don't know what else to call it, but it's like, if I don't eat right now, I'm literally gonna rip someone's head off. And I've been hungry before, but nothing like that. It's insane. So that's an interesting discovery for sure. <laughs> The foods that I really stuck to, like in the height of my morning sickness was fruit and cheese. And those two things really served me well. <laughs> I'm glad that I can eat other things now, but typically those are the things that I was like 
only able to eat and like keep down successfully. Like I knew for sure if I ate fruit and cheese, not, it wouldn't, you know, wouldn't come back up. It would be fine. So I kind of leaned on that a lot. Next step is to gather up the skirt and then zip it all around and then start gathering it up to fit around this bodice. So this next question is a big one. So we're going to do all of that while I answer this question. It is any plans for your core parenting values. I'm going to figure it out, but I think it might be a little silly for me to say like, this is exactly how I'm going to do things and that's not going to change. So generally though, I want to raise children who are connected to nature. I want to raise children who are curious, confident, and like emotionally intelligent. And so I'm kind of just looking to resources and people who are already parents who have children like that and just seeing what they did and, you know, taking what I like and not taking what I don't. Daniel and I have also had a few discussions where we've just said like, we really like our life right now. And obviously a baby is going to enhance that, but like how much of yourself do you lose when you have a child? And I think that's kind of like an existential question because you're losing something, but it's for the gain of something else. So it's fine. <laughs> There's people who should not have had kids, right? Who will have a lot to say about raising children and how much it ruined their lives. And I'm just really trying to drown out those voices with positive parenting situations because we really wanted to have a kid. Like this isn't something that we just did randomly. Um, we really thought this through. And there was a point in my life where I thought that I, if I didn't have kids, I would be okay. And I still believe that. If I didn't have a child, my life would be very fulfilled because I have, you know, other things. I have hobbies, I have interests and I have a really great partner. And so a kid isn't really coming in to like fill any gaps. It's really just coming in to enhance. And that's kind of the perspective that I've had um, because it's not a small thing to have a child. And I really don't think that as a society, it's something that's expected as much anymore. We're able now to make a much more informed decision on whether or not we actually want to have children. For us, we're thinking about this as in we're bringing this child into our lives and not that our life isn't going to change but like we still are people who like to travel we're still people who like to go on adventures and i like to sew and i like my plants and while those things might have to change a little bit because we have a child now um, those core things that we love to do are still going to happen she's ultimately going to integrate into our lives and how we live the moment of truth to see if i've done this correctly oh. I have, yes. I swear if I had to do that again, I would have been so upset. How much of the baby will you be showing on the channel and will you be doing any parenting content? I don't know how much I'm going to show the baby on the channel. And I just say that because things could change. But my first thought is that I really don't want her to be a, a main character here. So if we're talking main characters and side characters, She's not even gonna be a side character, right? I'm the main character, Daniel is a side character, my dogs are a side character, and she could be like a guest star or like a supporting actress, you know? Mostly just to protect her privacy, I think that we're seeing a lot of the negative side of showing a lot of your kids online before they can consent to it and really truly understand what's going on. I don't think ill of parents who do show their children. I just think that there's some considerations that should be made. It's a tough one because on one hand, I like she's gonna be like the light of my life and I wanna show her off to everybody, but I also have a responsibility as her parent to protect her. And um, you know, there's a lot that we don't know about internet safety and kids being shown online. Like, I don't know, it's, it's just such unknown territory. And I just really want to protect her from bad people on the internet who are not safe. And so, although you guys might be safe, I don't know who watches my videos, you know? I don't know everybody who watches my videos. There could be somebody who is quietly watching and is like kind of really scary. You probably won't see her face very often, if ever. I don't know exactly how I wanna handle that. I'm cutting out the new pieces. <laughs> that I messed up, but I quickly wanted to talk about the mommy content thing because yeah, I will probably make some like motherhood related videos, maybe some baby product videos. I don't know if I find things that I like, I'll probably mention it. I mean, it's not going to be a secret that I am a mother, <laughs> uh, but like the thing that made me a mother might be a little bit more 
uh, protected. We have another like existential type of question and it is how did you know you were ready and how did you and your partner have that conversation? So bottom line, we first wanted to be super secure in our relationship and feel like our relationship was kind of mature before we brought in another factor like a baby. And I always had this idea that like four years would be a good time to like have a kid. So our baby will actually be born a couple weeks after our four year anniversary. So it actually worked out pretty well. Last October, so October, 2021, I kind of thought to myself, okay, in a year, I think I'll be ready to try. And I explained this to my husband. I, sh I Well, I shared this with my husband and he was like, okay, yeah, like let's live it up for the next year and like see what life brings us. And, uh, you know, knowing that we're still gonna travel despite having a child and knowing that our life isn't going to completely end because we have a child, it sort of made it feel a lot less scary because we did have that conversation that was like, no, we still want to be us. Like we still have our things. Um, so that made it feel less scary and that made me feel so much more ready to do it sooner. Could I have waited even longer? Definitely, I'm, I'm gonna be 27 in a couple weeks. So I have time, you know. Of course, there's things that I still wanted to do before I had children. There are so many more places I wanted to travel, but really it was just travel. And knowing that I could travel at any time kind of helped me feel more comfortable with the decision. And I had an entire year to come to terms with it, let's say, or just like prepare myself. And yeah, so that's what we decided. We kind of projected it out a year and a couple months leading up to it, I was having like cold feet. Like I was like, I don't know if I'm ready, uh, but are you ever ready for children? Everybody always says that. Like, I feel like you can never be truly ready, but you, there are things you can do to ready yourself a little bit more. Has this affected my love for plants? <laughs> Great question. I am going to say no, it hasn't. But what it has affected is obviously like my motivation. I, I feel like my seasonal depression was so much worse this year just because I was so sick. But I will say that the collection is going pretty strong and I still have a very strong love for them. Like my baby is going to come out spitting houseplant facts <laughs> because I do very much so still love them a lot. Um, but yeah, it definitely uh, did take a back seat in regards to like caring for them this winter uh, just because I didn't have the motivation to do anything. It wasn't just my plants, it was really everything. Are you going to make maternity clothes? Yes, I do plan on making some form of maternity clothes. I mean, to be honest with you, a lot of the clothes that I have made are going to be fine with pregnancy. A lot of my dresses are not form-fitting. They're very loose. I mean, very similar construction to this baby dress. Like I have a lot of like baby doll inspired and like emperor, emperor, emperor waist? Empire waist, <laughs> uh, stuff like that. So I think that I'll be able to still wear a lot of my stuff, but I do have some ideas for things like some overalls and just, you know, changes that I can make to some clothes to just better accommodate my stomach because um, I do plan on gardening and I'm gonna need like clothes for that. These pieces will hopefully transition back into my wardrobe just with a, a few changes made to them because if I'm going to take the time to make the clothes, I really wanna make sure that they're gonna last me. Even if it's just adding an elastic band for a period of time in a pair of overalls, I'm happy to do that and then just take it out when I'm not pregnant anymore or when I'm done having kids. Admittedly, I have not made this sleeve three times <laughs> because I, redid it and then I screwed it up. I literally made the exact same one again. So now I have mirror images. Make sure that you do that. <laughs> I didn't screw that up the first time I did this. So I really thought that I was in the clear, but okay, now that that is done, I also have to say that since I'm doing this a second time, it's going a lot faster. Like I feel like I could crank out the next one in like, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours. But now I'm going to install the sleeves and we've got a few more questions. Um, do you still want to move to another country and how has this changed your general life plans? So yeah, I would still love to move to another country at some point. Like I, I think the, the idea of which country has sort of switched around a little bit ever since this because I'm, as I'm on like pregnancy TikTok, I'm seeing like which countries are like super baby friendly and stuff like that. 
I think the timeline on when that happens is different. I don't really want to do it when the babies are like really, really young because I think that would be harder on me because I'd be like even more isolated than I currently am. Spending the summer in another country would be a really fun thing to do. Uh, like going to Denmark for two months or something and getting a flat and living there and just like trying that out for a while or going to Japan for a summer. I think that would actually be more in line with kind of where we're thinking now because then we could experience more countries and more things. I need to now iron down all of this, like iron a folded under edge and then top stitch it on. And then I'm gonna top stitch around the entire bodice just because I feel like top stitching makes it look so much more professional. One of the final steps of this garment is to install the elastic band. So each size will require a different size of elastic band. So I just measured that out and I'm feeding it through with a bodkin. How does the medical system work in the USA for pregnancy? It depends on your insurance, I feel, but basically you go see your doctor every four weeks. And then when you get into the third trimester, you go every three weeks. The couple weeks leading up to your due date, you're gonna go every week. But generally, I mean, I feel cared for. It is a little bit weird in regards to getting like maternity leave and things like that, just depending on what your job is. Obviously I work for myself so I can kind of decide what I want my maternity leave to be. Since I'm on TikTok, I'm seeing like people's birth and postpartum experiences from all over the world and it honestly seems like the United States is one of the worst countries to have a baby because you're kind of like on your own as far as like any government assistance or anything like that um, like there isn't gonna be someone who is gonna come and check on you postpartum like I've heard in Germany There is somebody who comes to check on you like several times in Denmark and Finland and all of those countries For example, you get like three years maternity leave or one year maternity leave I don't really know. I don't know like all the ins and outs, but definitely in the US like you're lucky to get 12 weeks Absolutely ridiculous and the more I think about it the more upsetting it is. Okay. I finished the dress. It is so cute I love this fabric and the fact that this beautiful harvest basket is right in the center makes me really happy. It was a little bit of a nightmare with the buttons. We had a small <laughs> mishap, but we got it done. And I only did one buttonhole on this one because I didn't want to use a pink button. I only had this uh, wooden one as an alternative. This one is definitely an improvement on the first one that I made. So I think that if I make any more of this, they're just gonna get better and better. And it'll be even faster if I don't do these frilly sleeves, which I'll probably make a few versions without the sleeves. Thank you guys so much for watching and being excited for me in this next stage of life. I hope that I answered all of your questions, but of course, if you have any more, please leave them down below. We've got until July to get this done. Some people were asking when I'm due and I realized I forgot to say, but my current due date is July 11th. We will see uh, if she comes on time or early or late or whatever. But either way, we'll be prepared and excited to receive her. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you're not already so that you never miss an update because I will be updating more frequently now that the news is out. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.